What's up, everybody? Pumpkin here. Today we're doing a live uh, card review, I suppose. I'm doing this on stream as well as on YouTube. So we have eight cards to go over. These are the final eight cards that they went over during the tournament the other day. The first card we have is the Phantom New Monster 7 Provision Engine card. Four strength, one armor, veil, zeal, order, melee, damage an enemy unit by three at the end of your turn if order is not used, boost off by one. Uh, we're seeing a lot of these cards. Every faction is getting one of them, uh, just like for every faction. I actually think this card sees play. It's not terrible. It's not amazing. It is what it is. It's a little different than the others in that it does boost itself versus most of the other ones are somehow interacting with the board, whereas this is strictly just pushing more points into it. Um, yeah. I think it's alright. The only reason you wouldn't want to play this is if you play no other engines, in which case it's just an engine that dies automatically to removal. So, yeah, I think all the seven provision engines that are, like, risk-reward engines will see some play. Because they're not bad. The next card, we have the Cuddlers! I have no idea how to pronounce this name. New Squirtle card, eight provisions, five strength, deploy melee, boost a dryad in your hand by two. Deploy range, spawn a young dryad in this row, devotion, use both abilities. So, obviously, if you're playing Squirtle... Louder? Um, I can't go louder. No, it's it's good chat. So it, if you really want the full value out of this card, you need to be playing Devotion uh, simply because you do want to be proccing both effects for obvious reasons. Uh, if you do so, you're going to be getting 9 value for 8, which is obviously not bad. What kind of deck does this go in? Obviously, if you're playing like a full Devotion deck with the new Treants, you're going to be playing this card. Now, one of the issues is you have to boost a Dryad. It's not boost any Squirtle card. So for a hand buff deck, you basically have to hit Aglice. Now, there's patch notes that also came out today, but basically Aglice is going to four strength, which means maybe a hand buff Aglice deck with other cards like Skags, War Dancers um, could be viable. So I expect to see that card in there. Uh, any deck that is playing Symbiosis, this card's pretty good just because Symbiosis decks, you're also going to be playing Ethne, which is a Dryad. And there's a decent chance you're also playing poison so you're typically going to be finding a dryad to boost in your hand so yeah i, I think it's a solid card uh Squiatal and syndicate are the two factions that are going to have the easiest time to play devotion so i'd be very surprised if this card does not make it into a good chunk of Squiatal decks next card is hammer dryad five provisions four strength symbiosis we're getting another symbiosis card at the end of your turn if this unit has vitality boost off by one so essentially if the unit has vitality you get vitality again you get double vitality um really good with dryad's crest dryad's crest gives free vitality and it needs a dryad this is a dryad so with dryad's crest you're looking at nine points on the hammer dryad plus the x amount of symbiosis you have uh, so this into dryad crest really good the new echo card that i showed is pretty decent with this um going for five and five with five vitality is going to be pretty common if you push it onto here you're looking at five plus five plus five 15 plus the four body 19 plus minimum one with symbiosis potentially more if you have more symbiosis cards on the board uh, and the cool thing is this is a bronze so you can play two of them with the echo card you can play it twice so you can go this into echo card and then you can do it again the next round so yeah i think this card will see play in uh symbiosis decks just because symbiosis decks are already going to be playing the new echo card and dryads crest so seems like a pretty easy inclusion for there um as well as dryads enchantress also got a rework it is now i believe five provisions five strength give a unit three vitality so that in conjunction with this is obviously quite strong as well so yeah i think this card's quite good and it will see play now yeah it's unfortunate that it's four hp so it could die but the payoff is quite nice. So, yeah, good card. Next card, we have Ildiko, Ildaiko, Il... I don't know, something. Uh, this is a good Northern Realms card. Northern Realms didn't get too much in this expansion other than the new Echo card and the 4P card, the 7 for 4. Uh, this card's really strong. 9 provisions, 5 strength, order, boost an ally unit by 5 inspired when you play a Northern Realms unit, give a zeal. So, we had a card like this a while ago. Essentially, you play the card if it doesn't get removed, and you can boost it, which... Nah, it's typically not that hard. You can just start getting a lot of uh, free value off of your cards, and you don't have to worry about them getting mauled into the ground before you get your value off of it. Yeah, this card's good. It's going to be very good in an engine deck. Um, yep, it's going to see play. Solid card for Northern Realms. Next card, we have Skjordal Drummond. Three strength, eight provisions, devotion, veteran, deploy, damage an enemy unit by his base power. This card's really good, but you have to be playing a Devotion deck. 
Um, obviously, it's like it, it's very similar to Skags, except you can't boost it. It boosts itself as the game progresses. If you play this in round one, it's a six for eight. That's pretty bad. If you play it in round two, it's a four for four. Or sorry, an eight for eight, which compared to the other cards that have four HP and do four damage, it's better as most of them are nine provisions. Um, and if you wait until round three, it's a five deal five. That's really, really good for eight provisions. Uh, it's essentially like a muzzle or like the new tree in the uh, tail. Very, very strong card, but you have to be playing Devotion. Now, can you get away with playing Devotion SK? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Um, but I definitely think people will try it because this card is very, very strong. Uh, I also believe the new Echo card is also up to eight provisions, which means you can pull this out. So yeah, not a bad card whatsoever. If you can manage to pull Devotion, you're definitely going to play this card. Very, very strong card. Next card, we have Ulrich. This is essentially like Syndicate Adalia or Syndicate Ramen. Uh, 11 provisions, 3 strength, Syndicate card, 2 armor, Intimidate, Deploy Spawn, and play a base copy of a Bronze Firesworn unit from your hand, Devotion, boosted by 2. So, obviously, if you're playing Devotion, it's better. Uh, if you're not, you're going to be playing this in a Wide Firesworn deck. Wide Firesworn got a ton of support. I think every single card, with the exception of, like, one card, uh, pushes the Swarm archetype for Syndicate. So, I'd be very, very surprised... Uh, if this card wasn't auto-included in Swarm Syndicate. Will Swarm Syndicate be good? I'd hope so. I mean, if you pump out 90% of your cards for one archetype and it turns out to be bad, that would kind of suck. So, yeah, I'm really hoping the cards or the archetype is good. I'd be surprised if it wasn't. Um, yeah, but we'll have to wait and see. Our next card, we have a the 7 Provision... Uh, engine for Nilfgaard, 7 provisions, 4 strength, 1 armor, just like all the others. Veil, Zeal, Order, Melee, transform into Dunny. I'll show Dunny in a second. At the end of your turn, boost random ally unit by 1. Um, I think this is probably my favorite one, just because the transformation... Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and show you the transformation. Immunity! Yes, it's a 7-7 seven, seven immunity. Is that good? Uh, yeah, that's that's good. We have Immune Dragon, Scoia'tael, 8 for 9. This is 7 for 7. Not to mention, if you think it'll live, you can potentially milk some extra value out of this if you put it behind a defender. You're playing against a faction that doesn't have a lot of removal, let's say, like monsters. Um, yeah, really strong card. If you've ever played, um, what's it called? Enslaved Nilfgaard, and you get to round 3, and you're going second, a lot of the times you're playing the, the no-unit uh, game plan which is your opponent plays a card you kill it your opponent plays a card you kill it well this is a perfect card to be playing in that kind of deck just because when they don't play a card let's say they discard a card let's say they play a, a low value card that you're not really worried about killing you go ahead and play dunny and you give it immunity and you're happy it's a seven seven that your opponent can't interact with very strong card uh and it even kind of plays around last right with the one armor so yeah, this card's really, really strong. I'd be very surprised if this card does not see play. And our last card, probably the most exciting card, actually, for uh, the new cards that we're getting for this small little batch is Winter Queen for monsters. Four provisions, eight strength, devotion, thrive. At the end of your turn, if there are frost on both opponents' rows, summon this unit from your deck to the range row. So it's important. The second ability is not contingent on the devotion. The devotion is only for the thrive. This is really important just because... Uh, I talked about Ardgaith in the past. It's the Echo card for monster that spawns froth or frost on two rows. One of the problems with that card is you don't have a tutor. So in like a no unit deck, you're probably going to want to play Oniromancy. So playing Oniromancy into the Echo card is actually a play you're going to see from time to time if no unit kind of takes off. And you're definitely going to want to include this card in the deck. Yeah, you don't get the Thrive value because you're not playing Devotion, but just getting a free four points onto the board for eight provisions is really good. If you compare this to Roach, uh, it's one strength more, one provision cheaper. Uh, if you compare it to the Boat and Syndicate, it's not as good, I would say, just because, well, it is easier to pull out, but it doesn't come out multiple times throughout the game like the Syndicate Boat does. Um, but yeah, if you're playing a Devotion deck, the extra Thrive is really, really nice. Um, yeah, right. It is 2p cheaper than Roach. I was thinking of Snickers as well. So yeah, there's there's Snickers as well, 9p or 10p for Roach. Um, so it's better than all its neutral counterparts. And in the Devotion deck, this card's really, really good just because you get Thrive. And Monster likes Thrive cards. You're typically playing big cards. I think a Wild Hunt Devotion Monster decks will be viable. You're going to play the, the Thrive package, which is Larva's, uh, Broxa. 
what is it? Gurn, Goliath, Azrael, this. You're going to play anything that has the word Frost on it. You're going to play a bunch of Wild Hunt cards, Oberon, and yeah, that's going to be the majority of your deck. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing some monsters tomorrow. Uh, maybe we'll try some no unit monsters as well. It should be pretty fun. But uh, yeah, that wraps up today's very small card review. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Let me know in the comments which card you're most looking forward to playing. And I'll see you guys later.